Hey guys, this is White Manga here with a new video. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you guys about the importance of like branding your comic or your series or whatever it may be, whether it's an animated short, animated anything, a film or whatever, is just like branding it with like uh, having like the text logo, the logo, or some kind of icon that truly represents the essence. Uh, yeah, the essence of whatever you're creating, whatever your story is, whatever the series is, comic book, animation, etc. You would always kind of want something that fits, right? You know, it's obvious, and really there's no one else that can tell you what fits but you, since you're the creator of it. Uh, you can always get suggestions from, from people, but you should have like the final say, and you should kind of know what you want, already having a great idea of... Uh, where you're going and where you're headed with the design aesthetic where the theme or whatever it may be fits the overall overarching theme of the whole st series story novel book everything you see this in film like you, if you if a film comes out today the title of the film always has that its own its own style its own look its own almost like um, like a stamp right and if if like a second installment in the franchise comes along it'll almost be the same stamp and maybe they'll just put a part two right next to it and even the way they add the part two also fits sometimes right if you look at how it's done for like the harry potter series that would be different from the way it's done with like a horrible bosses you know what i mean uh there is a way they do everything sometimes uh, the sequel or prequel can take a drastic change or yeah just uh, an extra installment might uh, take like a vast a really diverse variation of the current style um but you know as we go on you kind of get a get a feel of what i'm saying because at the end of the day there isn't one way of doing anything you there is a lot of freedom but the importance of this video is for me kind of let you guys know uh, about letting that be a thing because i see the, the problem sometimes i see a lot of guys who are and gal and girls who are coming up uh trying to create their own comics and uh because they're new it's like amateur comics right so you know they're still learning and stuff like that and i was guilty of this too when i was coming up and because i'm in a hurry to just get this idea down and write stuff up and draw and want to start the comic i have this great idea whatever uh I, at least what i did right um thank god i don't do it anymore is Maybe if I was drawing a comic, I'm already doing it, creating a comic in this already unprofessional manner. Uh, but then I'm handwriting the text in the comic. Uh, uh, worse, I'm handwriting the logo. So the logo is kind of hand drawn, and there's nothing wrong with a hand drawn logo, right? The idea is that you draw it and then you keep it. You digitalize the file and you reuse that that text that represents the title over and over again where it almost serves as a logo for the series even though the series uh can also have like an icon as we'll see in uh later on in this video because in this video i also explore other uh logos and icons that represent series that i feel are strong especially for like the shonen genre of uh comics um so it's supposed to be reused it's supposed to be something where if someone sees it they they instantly, instantly recognize it, and you know, there is all there. If they already have that attachment to it, it's easier to jump in, right? If you want to have like a new installment of maybe a series that's already popular, if you uh, if you create something completely new, you might push people away. It's the same thing is is the same thing with the series itself. If you if if the part if the first part of the series was very action packed, but the second part isn't right those who were attached to the first part might not be might not like what the series has become today uh same things goes for title so if you're creating your logo by hand the next time you create it it's never going to be exactly the same uh in fact it might be drastically um, drastically different and uh it wouldn't look good it also doesn't look professional so you want to have like a digital file that can be reused and the same thing that goes for because it will also be used for like merchandising if you want to create a shirt so if i created an apple black shirt i already have an apple black logo that can go on the shirt if sad am is coming up with a sad am shirt we already have a sad am logo that can go on the shirt and you know it matches you want to have that continuous file 
it goes into people's head when they see it like you drive that out like your driving force your image it drives your story home fitting encompassing whatever you do and making it you know shoving it in people's faces and uh, until it becomes recognizable so if, if any of you are familiar with say the sad day AM logo if you see the foot anywhere the foot is the icon right the sad day AM with the foot is the like the text with the icons like the, the, but overall it's the logo right is that we're it's the brand so any, anywhere you see it, it you recognize it if it, obviously if you're familiar with it now for those of you who don't know what sad AM is is a digital magazine uh, and is digital anthology magazine featuring comics and interviews from people in the industry, etc. And my comic, Apple Black, is published and serialized there. Uh, you can read the first three chapters free in um, links will be in the description below. So you can go check that out if you're interested. Or you can purchase volume one, which has the first nine chapters. Uh, links in the description as well. Uh, I'm just saying that for people who are probably new to this channel. So basically, all I'm all I'm saying for now, right? You don't need to think too hard about it. But all I'm saying is, people need to like sit down and digitally create uh, their files, digitally create your logo, uh, an icon if necessary, uh, for whatever it is. This is you know some of the principles applied to starting up a business. And like I said, the Saturday AM magazine. It's a magazine. It's not necessarily a comic, but the whole idea of branding and marketing and all that stuff also applies to that so some people don't think about this when they're creating a comic or in or creating or coming up with the title of your series and you visualizing how it's going to look because it once you once you do it that's supposed to stick forever i mean there's sometimes people uh things get rebranded and you know that's possible um but again, it's something you need to think uh, think about. Uh, so if you see the Naruto logo, it's the same Naruto logo anytime, every time you see it. Uh, the second installment, Naruto Shippuden, is the same logo, but they just added, you know, the whole Shippuden thing in uh, Japanese Japanese script in the bottom right of it. But it's still the same logo. It still uh, gives off the same feel. It's all part of the branding. Um, and I'll go into more detail about that. If you if you're having trouble if your issue is coming up with this and you don't know how to create your logos uh, it's something you can learn easily with Photoshop or Illustrator you would have to learn you learn what a raster file is what a vector file is these are things that you can research and quickly learn because there are a million videos on YouTube that will kind of you know uh, tell you what's going on but for you guys I'm gonna be creating a new video uh, it will probably go up maybe tomorrow next tomorrow and I will be creating the Apple black logo from scratch and I'm only doing this because even though I created the logo before I've already created a logo obviously um, I want to create a new one not a different one is the same logo but I want to create a new file that's that uh, I can then turn into a vector file and what a vector file is basically is just a file that I can resize any I can resize the file however I want without it having any uh, pixel pixelation right uh, sometimes you can it can still be a raster file so if I just draw on Photoshop it's, it's automatically a raster file but if I create it in Illustrator it's going to be a vector file and um, and this is by default so basically in the next video I'll create something in Photoshop then I'll take it into Illustrator and turn it into a vector file that way I will have that file that logo that Apple black logo permanently and I'll be able to use it wherever I want to use it on a t-shirt on a on a toy or on whatever I want to use it because the file right now has some issues and I'm going to fix that so I thought it would be great for me to fix it in front of you guys you guys you guys will see it live as I correct things and uh, basically do it from scratch and then I turn it into a vector and uh, you know I also give some other tips on the side if you want to say given examples of if I wanted to do something different with the logo which I'm not going to but I'm, I think it's gonna be a fun video also one thing you guys need to know when you do create your logos a good practice would be to trademark it uh, I believe that's a video for another time when it comes to like trademarks and copyrights and things of that nature uh, those are I'll, I'll leave that for a different video um, yeah and that's all I say for that but usually it's good practice to trademark your stuff and copyright your stuff and all that good stuff just in case someone steals it and you'll be able to fight them in court and all that blah 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 all that boring stuff 
So here I'm just going to be going over some examples of what I'm talking about where and it's not just like when it comes to branding it's not just the logo it's not just the icon it could be you know something within the series right so uh, those who are familiar with uh, my comic Apple Black if you see the there's like um, a design on Sano's, Sano's uh, hand and you know just that that could be a t-shirt that could serve as an icon where any anytime someone sees that they know Apple Black if they're familiar with Apple Black at all then they know that okay that's a that's that's from Sano's hand and that's Apple Black and you can put that on a t-shirt you can you can put that anywhere you want to do it, and it's all part of the branding um, an example of this would be at the back of the like the shirts in Attack on Titan for that division I've forgotten the names you can leave the name in the description but that could be a shirt um, and you know those are things you can think of another thing I'll add on is that you know sometimes when especially making that transition from manga where they get like an uh, anime adaptation sometimes the anime adaptation the producers of that anime maybe would want to create something new for that so they create a new they'll just rebrand things just a little bit um, as they see fit I don't know why maybe for the market or whatever I don't know what the reasons are but sometimes they can rebrand things and say the logo of the anime might be a little different from the logo uh, on the manga but overall, the overarching brand branding is still pretty much the same. And an example of this would be Attack on Titan. If you pick up an Attack on Titan book, the logo is different from the logo on the animes. But anytime you see uh, like a manga iteration of uh, Attack on Titan, they're consistent with that logo. They're consistent with the branding, right? They don't redo it each time. It's not hand-drawn. And again, there's nothing wrong with hand-drawn logos is just that once you hand draw it that's it right you find a way to digitize that file and um say maybe you if i take a brush if you look at the vagabond vagabond logo uh, vagabond's a seinen manga if you look at the vagabond logo it looks like it's just a brush right but if um i'm pretty sure the creator doesn't do you know brush the name of the series the the title of the series each time he he needs to you know create the book cover or anything like that you 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 do it once you scan it in you give it some any like uh, digital changes or adjustments you want and then you have that file you ve you turn that file into a vector file and then you're good you can reuse that file as much as you want you know there's sometimes you you don't need to turn it into a vector file but you know in cases where maybe you would need to resize the logo where it's really big then there is an issue because there might be some pixelation issues and to maneuver through that would be to turn it into a vector file so like I said Attack on Titan has like different variations One Punch Man has like different variations for, for the uh, the anime to the manga uh, and sometimes you see these logos they'll have like a uh, Japanese translation under them I see people do this too and uh, again it's something I was guilty of but if you know your comic is not going to going to be published in Japan then what's the point right you also need to be thinking about all this stuff and you know be serious with yourself uh, some people just do it because it looks cool uh, which I guess I guess is fine but um, I mean if you know nobody if, it, if it's not going to be published in Japan and you put it in there you come off more as like a fanboy kind of thing rather than a uh, professional but you know if you're doing it, as, doing it as a hobby and you like it or think it looks cool sure have fun these are logos that I feel are really good. Death Note's another one that you know has like two variations. Uh, Dragon Ball has a bajillion variations. Uh, sometimes something to keep in mind with these logos is that it's it is sometimes it's less about the color and all the fancy stuff with the logo, and it's more about the silhouette. And by silhouette, I just mean like the shape of the logo, right? Where if I see a Naruto logo. Uh, if I take just the silhouette, I, it's still a Naruto logo. If I recolor the silhouette, it's, it's still a Naruto logo. An example will be like Fairy Tail. You see this logo, and then you see this. It's still the same shape, so it doesn't matter whether you know you change it up and down. It, it's still the Fairy Tail logo. So you know you could still you could explore that. It's still part of the branding. So sometimes you can do something different, uh, and it'll still be part of it. Like if you pick up a One Punch Man books 
even though the logo again when you say the books they're consistent with the branding right even though uh, it's it's different with the anime but anytime the anime puts the one punch man logo they're consistent with the anime things so the manga is consistent with the manga stuff uh but even then when you pick up uh one punch man books like the, even though the logo is the same is the shape that's the same the covers of each book usually the colors of the logos are very you know depending on the book depending on what book you're looking at so you can see something here with fairy tale uh one punch man be an example you see something here with harry potter um, again, it's mainly the silhouette. And you can see this. This is the Harry Potter silhouette, but you know, it you could look like this. It could look like this. It doesn't matter. You can exp that is something worth exploring. Uh, another thing would be how logo can logo can be reshaped. So you see something like this with panty and stocking. But let's say you had a book, right? And this was the logo. It's it's difficult to put this text logo on the spine of the book. So you need to think of uh, how the logo would look on a spine right and make sure it still fits uh it still fits the you know the aesthetic still fits the theme of whatever you were going for so for pantheon stocking i would really just take the the stocking at the bottom and just put it to the side and then it'll fit you know perfectly on the spine of a book another thing you can think of like i said is with the sad am logo where there's an icon and that icon could be sometimes could be enough right so the foot will be the icon on Saturday AM. But like you see here with Soul Eater, Soul Eater, you have that, not necessarily a smiley face, but closest thing I could think of. And you know, that could easily represent Soul Eater. And this, this logo, the Soul Eater logo, I guess doesn't have to be reshaped at all to fit in a spine. It already fits in a spine. So the way you position the words is also something worth thinking about. Uh, that's all I got for today. Uh, it was just something I thought it was necessary to keep you guys like for you guys to think about uh, for those who were creating your if you're creating your book you're creating a film uh, creating whatever you're creating uh, it varies from depending on what you're creating but specifically books um, all this stuff is worth thinking about especially if you're like just new starting uh, just starting up and you're creating your book I see people who send me stuff to like oh you know to check out and give them feedback and you know their handwriting their text in the book which you know it depends you know sometimes that works sometimes that fits the aesthetic fits the theme of the story or you know sometimes it fits but most times it doesn't right at least from what i've seen most times it doesn't but i can i can imagine times where it's suitable to actually handwrite your text rather than using uh, rather than using a computer but you know sometimes no uh and with if with like um Designing the logo, text logo of whatever brand, franchise you're creating, nine times out of ten is a no. Because you're going to have to reuse that over and over and over and over and over. Especially if you're taking it seriously and it's not like a hobby kind of thing. So yeah, that's all I got for you guys. I hope you guys like this video. Leave a comment if you have any questions. Um, share this video if you like it, really like it. Uh, subscribe so you can see me create a logo and give more tips, more actual tips when it comes to creating a logo because you will see me create one in the next video uh so you can leave questions if you have any um stay tuned for that subscribe for more videos like this i have more videos more i have more videos uh, drawing tutorials contests etc hope you guys enjoyed it so i'm manga and i'm out